and welcome to Matters of Faith. I'm Christiana Bakker and today we're in London in Clerkenwell to be precise, which is a very trendy media area. And this is also the headquarters of Matt Media, which is run by Abdulatif Salazar or Ovidio Salazar, a filmmaker and actually a trained actor. And he has made a, a number of wonderful films about Islamic subjects and other ones as well, which I'm sure you can explain to us much better than I can. Welcome to Matters of Faith. Mm. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having us here at your headquarters. Now, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Mm. You're actually American and uh, you started out as an actor. Is that right? Well, yes, I, I grew up in Hollywood. Mm. I was born and bred in, in California. My father was in the movies, as was my sister. Oh extras in films such as Tarzan. <laughs> so I was able to come in contact with kind of Hollywood in the old Hollywood, you know, when it was still more a, a, a lovely community. I mean, it was an industry, of course. And very glamorous as well. And glamorous. So I was exposed to that from an early age. Wonderful. Uh, but m a lot of my time was spent on the beach. So learning to swim with Johnny Weissmiller things like this, but I became a surfer from, a, from the age of 10. And that was one of my first passions, and I, I was in love with riding waves. Wow. And how did the glamour of Hollywood and that whole scene affect your life? <clears throat> well, um, I, I, as you said, I, I trained as an actor. I went to uh, Santa Monica College, and the theater program was one of the best in in California, in the area, and I was going to become an actor. But at the, precisely that time, I stumbled across some books on Sufism, and I started reading them and finding out really that there was this other uh, teaching, you could say, or this other knowledge that, that was very little known about, never discussed, and intrigued me tremendously. So, you know, as a child of the 60s, one was, had a certain curiosity, there was a, a, a burning desire to change the world. And uh, I, I found that by reading these books, for me, the message that came through them was you change the world by changing yourself first. And then that has a kind of a ripple, a, effect. A ripple effect, exactly. So did that affect your choice, your career path, in a sense? Very much so. I mean, you could say that I had uh, taken this path of going to become an actor in Hollywood, of, of just finding, you know, that was the clear choice. Coming a and, star and all of that. You know, something that one aspired to, just it came with the territory. I thought that I would naturally follow in the footsteps of those people that we knew. But once I discovered this other path, I really had to stop and reflect and think, isn't this kind of getting uh, myself into trouble a bit in terms of an ego, in terms of a, a kind of a, a false sense of, of the self, of who you are? Because the celebrity culture, it's a two-edged sword. I mean, you can affect a lot of change in the world by getting people, you know, if you are a, a figure of of note if you get famous that people will listen to what you have to say at the same time if you start to believe everything that you read about yourself you can you can have a it can have a negative effect by spiritually you could say by creating this uh, false sense of who you are so i th i thought it was really important that at that point i should call a halt go off and travel and find out more about who I was before I made a clear career choice. A little bit like Ghazali. <laughs> Very much like Ghazali or like many of the other figures of, of Sufism that you find, or Buddhism for that matter. You know, it's like you have a certain setup in your life, the status quo, but there's always an itching, there's always a nagging feeling that, that there's something more to life than, than what you, you just perceive outwardly. You were probably so much saved, you know, through that early discovery that you never even reached that peak of stardom when once you're in that treadmill, it's hard harder to get out, but you didn't even, you know, get into it at, a, at that level. 
I suppose you could say it was a blessing that I was saved yes. by my own uh, yeah. lack of uh, success <laughs> from an early age. Yeah, well. Um, also, you made uh, some wonderful films. Uh, can you give us a little overview? I mean, you, you, what a lack of success. You were very successful. You have numerous awards behind you. Uh, what, can you just tell us a little bit about what you actually did up, end up doing? Fine. Um, as I said, I, I set off on my travels. I lived in Europe for a couple of years. I studied meditation. I studied with a Sufi master. And that led me to go to Turkey. In Turkey, again, I studied uh, Sufism, as it were, in the various tekes, or the uh, spiritual centers of some of the more well-known brotherhoods in Istanbul. And also, I, of course, made the journey to Konya, to Maulana's Turbe. And I was gr grateful that I'd had this chance from a, from a young age to have, to have been able to be exposed to these, this civilization and this culture. And you could say it was the last remnants of, of, of a vanishing uh, historical period. It was the last of the Ottomans, you could say, because there were a number of, of people that I met. They were aged but they had witnessed all of the changes that had come about in the last, in the early part of the uh, 20th century wow. when Turkey became a republic. Yeah. So they still had a sense of the old Turkey about them. And there was a very deep spirituality to, to many of them. Yeah. And so I was, I was fortunate enough to study at their feet, you could say, figuratively yeah. speaking, you know, that I was able to imbibe some of their wisdom Wonderful. So I ended up living in Turkey seven months, and I think that would had a profound effect on, on, a, on, on the rest of my, my journey. Uh, coming back to England, well, first of all, to France, I met my wife. We, we eventually decided to live in Egypt mm -hmm. to study Arabic. Now there I, I ran into a fellow who was the producer of of the NBC, that's the American news uh, channel, news network, uh, who was the bureau chief there, who invited me uh, to work with him or work for him. He's quite famous as well. Uh, this is uh, Professor Abdullah Schleifer. Yes. And he, I could say he was my mentor. He's a, is a somewhat of a godfather figure. Yes. You know, he, he's a very uh, perceptive fellow. He finds how we can, he can utilize your talents and, yeah. and very much gave, gave me a, a boost up on, onto the career uh, ladder. So yeah. I started working for him at NBC. Oh. A crew from London Weekend Television came through who were producing a documentary on Islam. I, I won't say I blagged my way onto the, onto the production, but I did sort of tout my, my talents as an Arabic speaker, even though my Arabic was quite rudimentary. <laughs> uh, I somehow managed to persuade them to take me on to their, their shoot, and, and I seemed to do fine. They sent me on to Pakistan. I had a great time there. And from that moment on, I decided, well, this should be my path, that I should endeavor to make films that combine my knowledge or what knowledge I was learning about Islam with a career in films. So I became a documentary uh, filmmaker. I won't say I started out at the top. No. I started out as a researcher, as a humble, yeah. you know, uh, member of, of the crew. Yeah. But eventually it would lead me years and years later to become a director in my own right. Yes. Now you, uh, as a filmmaker, you are in fact trying to, and you have uh, produced many positive films on various different Islamic issues, uh, Muslim matters. Um, how difficult is it for you to pitch such stories? Because if at least, sure, in the news, the news is current affairs, they may have to show when a terrorist blows something up or whatever. Um, but in the documentary field or in, you know, in the cultural field, it could be balanced out. And you are trying to get into those kind of fields on television uh, with your positive Islamic stories. How difficult is it to pitch them and, you know, and what difficulties do you have or challenges? Well, it's certainly a challenge, you could say, because it, it's, uh, it's a scramble. I mean, there are only certain slots available to make a film on, on the subjects that I care to make films about. 
Now, sometimes they'll come to me and say, could you please make a film about something, such as the pilgrimage to Mecca. I've mm -hmm. had the great fortune in, in filming it on a number of occasions. And uh, so they, I've got a reputation as someone who films the Hajj. Yes. So oftentimes they'll come to me and say, well, would you oblige us? Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, I'll, I'll think for a, a split second and say, yeah, sure. But having said that, sometimes I have a, a subject that's burning within me that I feel is important and I'm trying to make it for a mainstream audience. And then I have to say, well, I'm competing with a thousand other filmmakers. And why me rather than someone else? I don't know. So oftentimes, you know, it's a lucky dip or it's just the commissioning process. And how that, receptible are they to Muslim stories in general? Well, it's hard to gauge that. I mean, I've had uh, varying success. I mean, as, as you know, I've, I, well, as I should say, I produced a series called Faces of Islam for the BBC back in the late 90s. And uh, that was something that, in fact, here in England, they make provision for the Muslim community by, uh, in, formerly at least they did, in having program slots during the month of Ramadan. I mean, it wasn't uh, yeah. much, but it was at least a token gesture yes. that they would provide some kind of uh, programming yeah. for the Muslims and for other people who wanted to know something about the Islamic mm -hmm. community here. Now, there's also there are a lot of new media um, outlets coming up. Uh, for example, a lot of niche channels, uh, smaller channels that deal with perhaps particularly Muslim audience or immigrant audiences, minority media mm -hmm. they're called. What do you think of those? Do you think they're a good um, platform? Is it a good diverse um, plural, you know, pluralism in the media? Is that a good positive thing? Or do you think they promote sort of segregation because every group watches their own little channel? Well, I think you, you need a mix. You need both. You can't just narrow cast and expect your message to be heard. But it's a good place for a forum, for people to air their views, to have a community that you feel you're, you're connected to. But there is the, a, a great plethora of, of choice now that people get lost in the, in the choice. And so how do you get your message across? I mean, personally, I think it's important to stay mainstream, to not get too hung up on, on just focusing on the, the, the smaller picture, you know, just to preach to the converted, as they say. For me, that's personally my, my view. But having said that, there's a, a great need for, for filmmakers, for people to engage in, in these uh, other multi-platforms, yes. whether on the internet or radio, you know, during Ramadan, there's radio shows or whatever it is in print. The main thing is to do it well. To, and to get in there and then perhaps to, to move a little bit from minority media to mainstream media and so on. As long as, I mean, if the minority media is, say, in English or, you know, in one of those languages, uh, mainstream languages, so to say, then at least the rest of the society has a, um, you know, can hear it and listen to it as well. And perhaps they get inspired and catch something, something they catch on. You're absolutely you know. right. I mean, distribution is another <clears throat> key area where not only as Muslims, but as filmmakers, I, I'm going back as, you know, out of my personal experience, uh, where the independent sector, you know, is struggles. Because unless people are willing to invest, to buy time or buy the space to, to have a, a place where you can show your product or your, what you've produced, then no one's going to know about it. Yeah. Now with the internet, you can actually uh, advertise or get it marketed properly, but it's a struggle. We'll talk about distribution and uh, many other aspects of filmmaking and Muslims in the media right after the break, so join us again. We'll see you there. <laughs>